Uh, hi, what's your name? Michael. Hi, I'm Ty. Speaking. Hi. Uh, so, quick question. What do you dislike about big tech, if anything? Oh, that's Where a big... do you start? Where, yeah, exactly. Where do you start? Uh, top, top one or two things. I don't like monopolies because they're anti-competitive, so that's one big one. Um, that's the biggest one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Also, um, I guess uh, the role of social media in the declining mental health of young people in this country concerns me. Yeah. Okay. So, I um, wanted to introduce you to a new product that we are launching. This is Foggy Mountains, the world's first personal web three server. So specifically with the more concerned about uh, big tech's monopoly, uh, you can help break that monopoly by becoming your own platform. Basically, you can download DApps. Uh, once you download them, they are yours forever. They can never be deactivated. They will only store data on this device. So, so let's say you download an email app, then all the email will reside here, and will reside on the server, etc. So basically, uh, you become your own platform, and you help break the you know, thoughts on that. Well, it's interesting. I do uh, security assessments and consulting for wallets, Web3, those types of things. So I guess my, my first question would basically be, um, like, what security advantages do you guys offer to your users? Great question. So uh, this first and foremost will be on your own network for hard to find. So, um, if you trust your firewall, then uh, uh, you can be as secure as anything you're going to get your own The second thing is in terms of uh, secure backups. So, uh, by owning one of these and making data on it, you can, you can make offsite backups in the fog as opposed to on the cloud. So, and using something like IPFS, file support. Something like that. Yeah. Essentially, essentially the same thing. And, um, and any offsite backups would be completely encrypted. You store your files on someone else's machine. They're not going to go to you. Okay. Do you guys have any like built-in um, compatibility or interoperability with like uh, various popular platforms? Like, are, do you guys have any partnerships going with DApps or other services? Well, you did mention uh, so, um, any file that you store on here, uh, you can publish to IPFS. And you can use this as, as your own private hidden service to IPFS. And, um, and you can think of this as like the Apple iPhone, where we're going to have an app store, and we hope to have a bunch of third-party dApps that people can, can buy and, and use our app store as, as a kind of additional platform. I yeah, know that does sound pretty cool. What what do you see being the uh, the biggest use case? Like like what user learns about your product and gets most excited because it solves their needs? So certainly people who are most concerned about privacy. So, using, um, using apps on this machine as opposed to third party apps in the cloud. Uh, and also, uh, uh, I think creators. Uh, I, what I think that should say every, every file that you load here you know, on this machine like, it gets up at the side of the encrypted URL. Uh, and then you also also get this on the uncensorable. And then, in addition, that was the most savage thing I've ever heard of my life. And you can get an NFT without using any code involved, and then you can feature that NFT and that digital asset in a decentralized marketplace. And so this powers your presence in a decentralized marketplace. Uh, think like Etsy. Yeah. This would be like digital Etsy, but decentralized digital Etsy, and no one server farm of Etsy. But this this is part of that server farm that runs that e-commerce of digital assets. Interesting. Okay. Cool. And there's one one other thing, which is uh, this does ship with uh, one to four terabyte hard disk. And uh, by by having one of these, you automatically become part of the decentralized uh, storage network. And um, any extra storage that you have on this machine uh, can be shared out and you earn crypto rewards. That was going to be my next question. Is there an incentive to users? Because I, um, I personally don't have any uh, particularly data intensive things that I'm working on. So it's an interesting idea. I just don't think I would get the full usage out of it. But if I can, if I can loan out that space, that could be pretty interesting. And in addition, there are two USB ports too. So if you happen to have a bunch of USB drives sitting around, 
uh, you can uh, uh, use this to monetize the extra space on those uh, USB drives as well. Interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. What, what, what do you think is the most exciting thing that someone has done with this box thus far? Well, the box isn't in production yet. Ah. Um, but <laughs> so. I, I got asked a similar question, which is, what excites the founders the most about this? And really what excites the founders the most is that um, you know, they are big believers in decentralization. They're big believers in Web3. The problem right now is with data storage and Web3, it's incredibly slow. And uh, if, ever, if Web2 users are going to migrate to Web3, they can't wait five minutes for a page load. The underlying protocol on this uh, will basically allow for pages to load instantaneously. How do you guys make that work? Like, what is what is your solution to increasing load times for everyone in Fox? The underlying protocol uses the blockchain in a very novel way. So that, uh, every file that you store on this uh, has a URL that has a creator ID and a content ID. That creator ID and content ID are stored to the blockchain. And then the blockchain serves as a database. Interesting. It serves as a lookup. And so uh -huh. when, when a browser comes and says, give me this file, it goes to the blockchain, and the blockchain knows exactly what files they're doing. And even if the file has been copied to 20 different places, it will know to go to one of those 20 places to get them together. Okay. I guess, I, you know, with something like this, a decentralized storage solution where there may be like many copies stored geographically distributed manner, there's, this has already been established somewhat, but I, I think mostly because of the line of work I come from, my next instinctive question is like, what what is your contingency for disaster recovery? Uh, it is basically uh, backing up, making offside backups on the block, which is, and eventually you will have the ability to say, you can prioritize your data into Level five criticality, level one criticality. And level one can be copied once into the block, and level five can be copied five times into the block, however much you want. So that's that's disaster. And so yeah. if, if this if this ever like was in your house and your house burned down, you could just get another one, type in your um, DID, and basically all of your outside backups will automatically be Okay, no, that's interesting. Thank you.